three-point shooting, distributing the basketball. They are just a better team when he is on the floor. So with so many quality and talented players, he has fit right in the McDonald's All-American like his mom and dad, Stacy and Jeff, has been playing fabulous basketball. He came off the bench the first seven games with D.J. Wagner out with a left ankle injury. Shepard makes his first collegiate start today for Kentucky. And he takes the first shot, a three. And rebounded off the floor by the Seahawks' Noah Ross. The Seahawks wearing their teal uniforms today. With the starting five for the Seahawks. They've got some guys who can shoot the three, including Lee Carton-Hayes and K.J. Jenkins. It was a drive by Newby, and it's UNCW that has the game's first points. Yeah, Devon Newby, Donovan, sorry, Newby out of Chicago Heights, Illinois. The 6-185 senior strike first. Here's the the uh, Kentucky starting five again. Shepard in there for DJ Wagner, who looks to be out a few weeks with that ankle injury. We got our first whistle and follow the game, and it's against the, the Seahawks. Phillips picks up the foul. We give you a look there at big number two Aaron Bradshaw because he is going to make his collegiate debut today. Yeah, we know Big Blue Nation is waiting, and, you know, Coach Callis said he's going to try to put him in with Trey Mitchell today so that he can kind of coach him on the floor. So he's going to play the two bigs together. Edwards shot in and out. Kentucky's missed their first two from the field. Here is Phillips, drives all the way underneath. That three is on the way, and good. For the aforementioned Malik Harden Hayes. If you're wondering if UNC Wilmington is just getting hot here early, the fact of the matter is, is just a couple of games ago they were top five in the nation. As you see that finish by Edwards. Yeah, Edwards taking Ross into the lane, picking up the first points of the game for the Cats. But yeah, Mark, the Seahawks, you know, just a few games ago were top five in the nation in three-point shooting. Their last game, though, they go three of 23 from behind the three-point line and took a tough loss. Yeah, that's really been the only game they have struggled to shoot the three. It was on Thursday at East Carolina. Shot clock's at two. Phillips puts it up off the right side of the rim. Punched out there by Harden Hayes, and the possession kept alive by Ross. Phillips in between the legs dribble, puts it up, in and out. Reeves in transition, wow. races it to the rim. Now what Coach Cal wants to see is this team get the ball up in a hurry, and they did there. Well, and you're going to see five guys for UMC Wilmington coming in the basketball game just did a horrible job of getting back, and that will get you blown out here in Rupp Arena with these Wildcats. Ross! Three-point shot, just his third made three of the season, so he's not one of the usual suspects to hit the three, but he does so there. Well, he was most excited in the shoot-around today. He's a guy who I like. He's physical, he's feisty, he looks forward to the competition. Trey Mitchell, the double hit, pass out to the open Edwards, the lefty fires, and it's short. Harden Hayes a little slow getting up behind the play. Newby. Finds Hart Hayes, who says, I'm okay to shoot the three, or maybe he wasn't, as that does not go higher. You can look at the Seahawks' numbers, right? We, we talk about this game getting up and down 82 points per game. 35 of those coming off of the bench, so you'll see a lot of depth. They're not three-pointers per game actually extremely impressive as well and you see they're shooting about 39 percent and that's after going three of 23 the previous game mark yeah that's uh, and the changes we just saw like a hockey line change to ko <laughs> siddle the head coach has been doing that for a while that's tipped a couple of times because you got rob dillingham now in the game it's jordan burks has also come in off the bench for kentucky as has to do the era there's farrar he's a big body they double him, and it's stolen away by the quick hands of Rob Dillingham. Reeves loses it, and it's back to the Seahawks. Yeah, not the start that I think Kentucky fans really had wanted, but when Rob Dillingham gets in the basketball game, the tempo always picks up. He's going to bring electricity, energy, and effort. 
By the way, if you're wondering when Aaron Bradshaw may came in, come into the game, Coach Cal told us today he wants Bradshaw to be on the floor with Trey Mitchell. Mitchell left the floor as part of the first subs that came into the game. Seahawks hit the game's first five points. They lead it by four. A little hand check there and a foul. Take us for our first break. Fierro picking up that personal foul. Cats off to a two for six shooting start on this Saturday. Coaches, and you have your, a very good young coach here today, and he's excited to come in here. We asked him, what do you expect from your team today? He said, obviously, we want to win, but most importantly, we want to get better. We want to learn from our mistakes and improve every single game. They're not afraid to schedule the big-time opponents. Last year, they played North Carolina, Oklahoma, and UConn in the first 11 games of the season. This is K.J. Jenkins in the game. This shot rolls off. Shepard, quick outlet for Dillingham. He's going to pull up with a three, and that comes in and out. Had a number of those shots really on both sides already that have gone down but not stayed down. And Jenkins, Woo! he is really one of the top three-point shooters that we're going to see in this game for the Seahawks. Yeah, the Mexico transfer actually drained 108 three-pointers in two seasons there. Wide pass. Reeves has to save it. And then when he tried to get it to Shepard, it's picked off by Hodge. And another three from the left side from Jenkins. A little bit long. Got his own miss. Nice pass underneath. And it's laid in by Trezarian White. Timeout, Kentucky. Well, when you look at Aaron Bradshaw, as you travel around the country, most coaches will tell you they believe he is a guy who could be a top five pick. His length, his athleticism, his versatility. Uh, but this is his first game, and so it'll take some time for him to get his legs underneath him. I'm sure he's going to be anxious. Dillingham's pass was low, and it goes off the feet of Bradshaw. And it goes out of bounds. Not exactly probably the way he would have hoped his first <laughs> offensive set would go in a Kentucky uniform. And as Coach Cal promised, Mitchell on the floor at the same time with Aaron Bradshaw. And Shamar with Tan Mays has checked in. There's a three. Jenkins not shy to shoot that three. He's now one of three in that department after hitting his first pass on the boot a little behind, but the long arms there of Justin Edwards keeps it alive. Yeah, Kentucky right now a little loose with the basketball here today, but they play up and down, and that's exciting basketball as you see that trifecta by Trey Mitchell out of Pittsburgh, West Virginia. His 10th made three of the season. Shooting close to 40% from beyond the arc. Six minutes into the game, a six-point lead for UNC Wilmington. Jenkins, three, launched by Hodge. And a Mitchell rebound. Dillingham crashes into the lane. That's going to be a blocking foul called on the Seahawks and Shamar Rattan Mays. I tell you what, Rob Dillingham is like he's blasted out of a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he was a uh, vehicle, he would certainly be a sports car. He only had one speed, you know. But what, what I love about this Kentucky team thus far is the way they're distributing the basketball, right? They lead the country in assist-to-turnover ratio. So that means they're not only assisting it, but they're making good decisions and have high basketball IQ. Dillingham throws it under. First collegiate hoop from Aaron Bradshaw brings a big cheer from the rough crowd. Hayes. <laughs> and on the other end, he gets called for the goal tip. Count the basket. That's quite a sequence. You think the young fella's excited? Finally gets it. And look at all the energy, excitement, emotion. You got to think about this time where he's been rehabbing in the weight room, controlling the diet. He finally gets a chance to get back in the basketball game. That's what you saw in that dunk. Reeves hesitated. Shepard trying to get to the rim. Who's that off of? I'm going to say it's Seahawks basketball. Got to give a lot of credit to the Seahawks, right? Seven minutes into this basketball game, 
They haven't made careless turnovers. They've taken care of the basketball. They've played tough. They've been physical and played with a lot of confidence here early. And they've hit six of their first 13 from the field and three of their first eight threes. Kentucky just one of five from beyond the arc to start the game. Four for 11 overall. This is Rosarian White, guy who comes off the bench, but really has been their best player. Rattan Mays, three, tipped by White, deflected into the arms of Shepard. Edwards lost the handle. Only four turnovers for Kentucky, and now Seahawks turn it back over for the second time, and blocking foul. The one against Rattan Mays of the Seahawks. When you face the Kentucky Wildcats, number one on that chalkboard has to be defensive transition. Aaron Bradshaw gets there, and if you're wondering, why does Justin Edwards throw the basketball to him? You know, he's a big seven-footer. You know, that's, that's not a good place. It, it is for Aaron Bradshaw. He, he has the same versatility as you're going to see out of a Trey Mitchell. And the reason why they can insert him in the basketball game similar uh, eventually is because they can play four out one in. Coach Cal wants to have all five guys who can dribble, pass, and shoot use their length and athleticism to play at a high tempo. And that's what they're working on tonight. Yeah, we asked Coach Cal how many minutes he thought Bradshaw would play. He thought around the 15-minute mark. We'll see. You and I saw him at practice yesterday. And he was, as he's going out of the game here, he would get a little winded at times. But that's to be expected when you're coming off a foot injury and haven't done a lot of cardio, I guess. Yeah. He was extremely impressive to me for the small amount of time that he played. And you can see just the... A little light of what kind of difference he's going to make for this Kentucky team. He might have made a difference against Hunter Dickinson in the Kansas oh, game. No doubt. Absolutely. And Kentucky fans happy to see Aaron Bradshaw on the floor today. Right now, Cats down by five. Phillips pull up from ten. Good. Pretty basketball. Nice by Phillips. Jakeen Phillips, third on the team in scoring last year, is an extension of his coach. And if you're wondering, is Aaron Bradshaw going to make a difference? <laughs> Look at all seven. A fan of the transfer portal for allowing kids to have freedom because he actually transferred himself. And, and, and I would agree with him. You just see, now obviously you, you have to have transparency. Uh, some coaches complain about the dates in which the, the kids are able to transfer. But if someone isn't happy, and in particular if there's a huge coaching change, a firing of their head coach. I definitely love the freedom for those guys to go where they're wanted and where they think they can have a better opportunity. You know, we asked Coach Cal today at the shoot-around and said, how did you end up in Wilmington at UNCW? And he said, it was family. I had a cousin who we called Uncle Joe and his wife Phyllis who lived in Wilmington so I could live with them, get groceries, yeah. have family there. And they were a big reason why that he wound up in Wilmington. Yeah, he talked about he had a place to stay, he had yep. plenty of food to eat. Uh, right now, I like what Coach Cal is doing defensively because they like to play fast. But if you want an opportunity to knock off the likes of a Purdue or, uh, or even Kansas, you know, guys with big men, then at times you're going to need to see if you can speed up the game on the defensive end. And I think that's why they're extending their defense a little bit here today just to work on that. Dillingham. His pass goes off the body of Harden Hayes. Well, coming up Saturday, SEC Network gets a matchup in Baton Rouge. K State taking on LSU at 1 30 Eastern, 12 30 Central, also available on the ESPN app next Saturday, one week from today, here on SEC Network. Dillingham with the shot clock winding down, did not draw iron, and it's out of bounds. To UNCW. One thing that I noticed that the Seahawks are doing here earlier are just keeping the basketball in front of them. You always want to have guys that can put the defense at a disadvantage, whether that's via the post and you have to double down or off of the bounce. Kentucky is doing it off of the bounce, but the Seahawks aren't allowing them to do that. The good news for Kentucky is that 
they've been strong on this end defensively. Harden Hayes picks up the offensive foul for the Seahawks, his first. Uh, Reed Shepard checks back in for Kentucky. UNCW played on Thursday night at East Carolina. They led by seven at the half, but wound up losing 74-66. And, of course, Kentucky in their last game demolished Miami here on Tuesday. UNCW, give them credit. They have shown up to play here today. Not up here intimidated at the moment. Adu Thiero. A nice drive to the rim. He's the difference maker. I've, I've compared him to having the potential of a Darius Miller. He's not shooting as well, but the size that he has as well. Donovan Newby. Shooting 42% from beyond the arc coming in. Nails that three from the right corner. Lead back to six for the Seahawks. And the UNCW foul inside on Phillips, his second. Uh, this is where Thierro really, I think, excels. He can go left or right. He can finish with both hands. A young man who actually has grown since coming to Kentucky. He was closer to six feet. Now he's 6'8". Grew two inches last year and put on muscle as well. Rolls out. Tipped by Thierro. Loose and it's grabbed by Ross of the Seahawks. Lining up another newbie. Well long on that one, though. Yeah, tough one. That was contested. Reeves quickly up the floor, trying to get to the rim, bumped into Harden Hayes. And he had just picked up an offensive foul a couple of sequences down the floor. So now Phillips and Harden Hayes each have two fouls for UNCW. Well, and that's what I mean when I talk about Kentucky having multiple guys who can put the defense at a disadvantage. Obviously, Wagner not playing today for precautionary reasons, but you've got Rob Dillingham who can get by his defender. Reeves can get by his defender. Shepard can get by. Edwards, so many guys who can get by the defenders and put the defense into rotation to where now you're trying to close out as it's quality shooters and playmakers. Early applause again for Bradshaw. You got a quick look at DJ Wagner there on the bench. He was injured in the first half Tuesday of the Miami game. Midway through this first half, five-point lead for UNC Wilmington. Been a little bit. Bradshaw takes off. Trey Mitchell's out there. One-on-one, -on -one, buddy. One-on-one. -on -one. Boy, he looks good out there, doesn't he? He does indeed. 7-1, 225-pound freshman from New Jersey, a McDonald's All-American, and since his top five recruit, seeing the floor for the first time today. Notice Kentucky on this end, how they defend without fouling. Only one foul. Bodies on the deck. It's going to be over and back as it was first touched there by Jenkins, but Rob Dillingham was giving it everything he had to get to that basketball. Yeah, both guys. I love it. Getting down on the floor. K.J. Jenkins was first to the floor. Correct call over and back. Have to continue to take care of this basketball for UNC Wilmington. Mitchell, a little high-low pass, but reaching to break that up. Vanderheiden, who's checked in the game. Eric Vanderheiden, just the fourth game he has played this year for them. You get a push before the shot. And a foul on Trey Mitchell. This is very interesting for me to see Aaron Bradshaw and Trey Mitchell playing together because there are going to be some games where you're going to want to have two bigs like that. You think about teams like Arizona, right? Uh, where they've got quality bigs, uh, a ball on, on the interior. I, I'm anxious to see, can they move together with this smaller team? Can Bradshaw and both Mitchell move their feet well enough? Tan Mays, a little fadeaway, points off the back rim, and a Bradshaw rebound. Quickly ahead, Dillingham, he's going to try to race right past Jenkins and finish the shot. Here's White, gets in a crowd, kicks it to the corner for the open three. Bounces off from Nolan Hodge. Two on one, Reeves, some contact, and they're going to call it travel. He bumped in to Jenkins, and that caused the feet to shuffle a little extra time and the traveling violation. Yeah, unfortunate turnover that time by the Wildcats, but I love the way they pitch ahead. We talked about their defensive pressure earlier, but one of the best things this team for the Wildcats do is that they keep offensive pressure on you. It has to be a full sprint to get back defensively. 
that is six turnovers in the first half for Kentucky, a team that's only averaging eight a game, one of the fewest turnovers per game in the nation. But a higher frequency so far today, a white, and he went over the rim there. That's going to be basket interference. Yeah, they white. Were, as you were saying, Mark, excuse me, you know, you look at that turnover, assistant turnover ratio first. They were third in the nation in the turnovers per game, the turnover margin. This is uncharacteristic. Maybe you've got some guys feeling pretty good right after that Miami game. But you also got to give a lot of credit to the Seahawks. They have maintained a lead throughout here. The Seahawks scored the game's first five points. And Kentucky has never led. Largest lead in the Seahawks was nine. Reeves down the right side of the lane. And contact from Eric Vanderheiden, 6'9", transfer from Ole Miss. Well, Eric Vanderheiden doing a nice job against Aaron Bradshaw, 6'9". Uh, he's given up. Uh, quite a few inches. Obviously, you look at Aaron Bradshaw, who's 7-1. And what he's doing is he's fronting the post. I assume that a lot of teams are going to try to front the post. You've got to move the basketball and create better angles, passing angles, to get it inside to the bigs. You know, Vander Heiden for the Seahawks and missed a couple of games with an ankle injury. This is his fourth game, eighth game of the season for the Seahawks overall. But you can see why with his height, 6-9, why Coach Siddle would want him in this game. Yeah, well, he comes from an athletic family, right? Father yes. played professional basketball in the Netherlands. Mother played basketball at UMass Morale. And later played professional. Kentucky has gotten it down to a one-possession game with eight minutes to play in the first half. I like how the Seahawks, is, they're trying to move the defense. It's getting stuck a little bit right now, which is why they're in trouble. Kentucky wanted to travel. White dribbling out of the double team. Had his shot blocked by Mitchell. Loose Shepard has it. On the offside here, he's got Edwards, but a pick there by Nolan Hodge. Hodge running past Shepard. Kicks to the corner. Jenkins, deep three right out front. Too long. Offensive board, White. A couple of ball fakes. No reset it up. Nice reset this time by the Seahawks. White gets in the lane. Twisting, turning, shooting, and scoring. And wanting to foul, but nonetheless. Well, that's exactly what you need to do. Take it right into the chest of a shot blocker. And Bradshaw gives them more rim protection. Tan Mays going for the steal. Gets left in the backcourt. Shepard, his pass. And Rattan Mays, who was late getting back to the play as a result of that, was in the right spot there. But now it's loose again, and it's tied up. The possession arrow... Give it to the Seahawks. So under seven minutes to play in the first half. The Rupp Arena on this December. And Reeves, most of his damage has come from the line. One field goal, three or four from the line. A lot of times, Mark, in games like this, you want to try to get going off of your defense. I think that UNC Wilmington has come in and done that, right? Their defense has set the tone. They've let the offense really come to them. Let's see if the Cats can do the same thing on the defensive end as well. First ever meeting between these schools. And there's a turnover for UNCW, and that's their sixth of the half. And now Kentucky, that makes it nine here in the first half. Well, coming up tomorrow, 6 Eastern, 5 Central, our annual SEC Now Bowl Special. An in-depth look at the SEC teams playing in a bowl game, plus a preview of the college football playoff semifinals. What's that coming up with the guys tomorrow? Is there football going on today? How guys <laughs> not in the state of Kentucky, uh, it's not. It's all yeah. about hoops here. Well, we're in the right place today. Though. Pass down low by Shepard, deflected off. UNCW. Dillingham's going to check back in along with the arrow. Bradshaw will come out along with Edwards. One of the other things Coach Cal said in the practice yesterday was, hey, don't give UNCW a hope. Mitchell fouled. Going up to try to slam that by Noah Ross. 
I think UNC Wilmington, I don't know about hope, but maybe that's too strong a word, but they're feeling pretty good about themselves at the moment here, Fish. Sure. Well, listen, this is an opportunity for UNC Wilmington to show the world that they can play with anybody in the country. And Coach Cal used to talk about it all the time. He'd say, you know, teams come in here, they'll go 3-23, and 23, which is what UNC Wilmington did the last game. They'll come in here and knock down every shot that they put up. Uh, that's something that the young, seventh youngest team in the country has to do right now. Shepard has missed all three of his field goal attempts. One of those a three in his 13 minutes coming off the game high 21 points Tuesday against Miami. And Reed making his first career start for Kentucky today. Crowd wanting to see some defense leading to offense here for the Wildcats. Down by five once again. Jumper, newbie, good. Easy money. Just a side ball screen and roll. And Kentucky just not active enough on the defensive end right now. Senior Donovan Newby right now leading all scores after that field goal with seven points. Mitchell's got the advantage here. Nice beat. The arrow finishes and one. Pretty basketball. Trey Mitchell is the graduate senior, the transfer from West Virginia. You know, he's a guy who... Coach Cal really leans on. He's almost like a big brother to all of these guys on the floor. He's seen it all. He's done it all. And he's the guy that I'm going to really look to as this season goes on, that when Kentucky faces challenges or adversity, he's the guy that helps them maintain their poise. Bradshaw back today, but when Aaron on the inso, Ivasich on the bench, Trey Mitchell, a godsend for Kentucky to have him early this season with those big men when they were unable to play. Noah Ross shooting. Reeves, spin move. And one and done for Kentucky. Here's Newby. He's going to put up a three. Ten first half points. For Donovan Newby, the transfer from Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Well, we've got a track meet. Both teams that love to get up and down the floor. Exactly what we expected, Mark. Wow. Donovan Newby just stops, pops, and watch those net drops. He loves being here in Rupp Arena. Excited for the moment. You think about this team. They are a veteran team multiple players back you think about the success that they've had cbi championship there's a culture that is here and these guys even in spite of the loss against east carolina have come ready to play reach in there by dillingham that's his first the last time uncw made it to the ncaa tournament 2017 they've come close the last two years in their conference the Colonial Athletic Association, they've gone to the title game, tournament title game, each of the last two years, lost last year to Charleston, two years ago lost to Delaware. So they've been on the cusp of the NCAA tournament under yep. Coach Siddle. Well, pick second, right? Yeah. This, this year behind College of Charleston. And you, you think about, and, and they got, I think, three or four first place votes. So you know this is a team that uh, is going to compete to win their league and compete to get into the NCAA tournament. Newby again from three, around and out. Fierro. Three, Dillingham. Kentucky can't buy a shot right now. Yeah, it's just uncommon, but I like that look. I love the pressure that they put on offensively. You'll take that from Dillingham all day long. Cats, one of their last seven from the field. UNCW's hit five of their 15 threes and now make it six of 16 as Jenkins nails his second of the game. We certainly have us a basketball game tonight. And a 10-point lead for UNCW, their largest of the game. Mitchell 
Defended by White, looking to back him down. A spin to help defense. Came, hit the shot, and a wave it. Foul on the floor. UNC Wilmington on the road in the hostile environment, but they came. A little over two minutes since they have scored, but a chance for Mitchell at the line here, shooting two to end that drought. You know, this is an interesting game because we just mentioned that UNC Wilmington was picked second in the league. So imagine the Seahawks win their tournament, and potentially this is the first round of an NCAA tournament game. This is a great experience for both of these teams, especially the Seahawks here on the road. So three and a half minutes to go, first half in Lexington. Ten-point lead at one point right now at eight for the Seahawks. Open three, good. Woo. And they're showing, and K.J. Jenkins with that three, his third of the game. You, you can't leave them open, especially the three main three-point shooters for UNC. W. Mitchell, looking to back down Hodge. Turn, spins, the left hand. And pinball's out. Outstanding job defensively by Nolan Hodge. Piero oh. fouled him and a chance for a four-point play for Nolan Hodge. Nolan Hodge does it on the defensive end, gets back defensively. Coach Cal would not like that. He tells his guys that he doesn't want them to leave the floor. And Adut the arrow that time, he didn't leave the floor, but he also didn't allow Nolan Hodge space to come down. Nice poise being displayed by the 6'7", 180-pound sophomore out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Can't finish a four-point play. The lead at 14, the largest of the game for UNCW. And Bradshaw in there. Pull-up jumper. And Shepard's field goal snaps the field goal drought for Kentucky. Kentucky's still only shooting 32% from the field, 7 to 23 to begin the game. Yeah, very important two minutes left to go in this first half from a momentum standpoint. Hodge waits, had it blocked. Run out by Shepard. Open three. Off the heel from Justin Edwards. Just not making shots today are the Kentucky Wildcats and UNC Wilmington just relaxing, keeping the basketball in front of them. Nice job of Donovan Newby, their vocal leader, really just slowing it down and making sure they get a good look on this end. Jenkins. I guess that qualified as a good look for UNCW today, even though he was five or six steps behind the arc. And there they beat him down the floor in the lay-in by Dillingham. Pretty basketball. And UNCW wants a timeout. With a minute and a half to go, now up 10. We're up 14 at the three-minute mark. Well, anytime you go from defense to offense against the, this Kentucky Wildcat team, Mark. Made more three-point shots than Kentucky has attempted, and Kentucky's one for seven in three-point shooting. Yeah, defensively they've been solid, and the bench production has been outstanding as well. They are winning the bench points 20 to 5. UNCW got up by as many as 14. That was the largest deficit Kentucky's faced all season, and a drive by White. Foul on Edwards, and another chance for a three-point play here for the Seahawks. Strong. Cesarian White, right now coming off of the bench, but at 6'7", 190 pounds, probably one of their more athletic and better players on their basketball team. He is a guy who you have to keep your eye on consistently. Last year led the team in scoring with 14 points and also led the team in rebounding with close to six rebounds per game. And he came in averaging 18 points on this season through the first seven games. And finishes a three-point play there. White, preseason first team, all what's now called the Coastal Athletic Association, no longer the Colonial. Dillingham leans in, got in a bad spot, somehow found Shepard, who drains a three.
For Shepard, his first made three of the game, and just the second made three of the half for Kentucky. Newby, corner, Hodge, three as well, short. Shepard, middle of the floor, elects to take it himself. Wow. You know, I've watched quite a few of these Kentucky games this year. And obviously, D.J. Wagner's not in this basketball game, but you think about when Kentucky made their run versus Miami. That was a close basketball game in the first half. Reed Shepard has always been a part of it. I heard Jay Billis in the last game. He said, Kentucky's just better with Reed Shepard on the floor. And he is making huge baskets here today. So the Wildcats have now hit their last three from the field and cut what was a 14-point deficit down to eight. And Shepard has seven of the last nine points scored by the Wildcats. Yeah, Reed Shepard trying to speed him up, realizing that the Seahawks want to take the last shot. Got a four-second difference, shot clock and game clock down. Mitchell. Oh, wow. With five on the shot clock, contact. This is Kentucky foul. Oh, wow, that's a tough break. And the fans would agree. You got to call a spade a spade. I didn't see that one, Mark. And it goes as the second personal on Trey Mitchell in the half. He joins the arrow. It's the first two Wildcat players to two fouls. And now UNC Wilmington can hold it for the final shot. A drive rolled off the rim. Boy, he got a great look. But a first half where UNC Wilmington has led from start to finish. And they're up 41-33 at the intermission at Rupp Arena. In the day, teams are going down today. Duke goes down uh, on the road uh, at, against Georgia Tech. You've had Marquette go down against Wisconsin. Uh, we talked about Purdue already taking a loss against Northwestern. This is a huge opportunity for the Seahawks. I can't wait to see how Kentucky responds. Well, Kentucky started with the arrow on the floor here to start the second half. We're trying to lob one up to him around the rim. It's out of bounds off UNCW. UNCW led by as many as 14 in that first half. The biggest deficit Kentucky has faced in any game so far this year. Mitchell has the size advantage over Harden Hayes. And the first shot of the half does not go for Kentucky. I like the mindset, though. They want to go on to the interior, try to use their size, get Trey Mitchell the basketball at point blank range. Keep Phillips. It will be 10 points to lead all scores in the first half. Number one for UNCW with six on the shot clock. A deep three is short from Harden Hayes. The arrow wide open. Mitchell with a three in the first half. Can't there. Yeah, but look how much better a look the Cats got just by not forcing it on the first side of the floor. A little bit more patience being displayed. Seahawks have displayed patience. The entire first half, they need to continue to do that. Tough shot. Way off the right side from Newby that time. Shepard splits two defenders. Jump nice. stop. Nice feed for the stuff from Edwards. He's a coach on the floor. Love the bounce, the finish by Edwards, but that all started with Reed Shepard. That has put a charge into the Rupp Arena crowd. Phillips. Newby. Five to shoot. Double dribble. Seahawks turn it over for a seventh time. You know how on 4th of July when you light you, the fireworks and it takes a little bit time for that spark to go off. <laughs> That's what's happening right now in Rupp Arena. And it started with this pass and finish from Shepard to Edwards. I don't know what they call those fireworks, but you do have to have patience. 
you don't want to <laughs> approach them too quickly. Reeves got it. Here come the Cats. Got it down to a four-point game. Now the Seahawks looking for a bucket. An eight-point lead in the half at the intermission has been cut in half. Woo! Wow. Circus shot there dropping for Phillips and one. Shaquem Phillips, you know, Coach Siddle actually told us that he had an interesting career. When he first got there for the Seahawks, he kind of played off the ball a little bit, right? Uh, and, and actually, in his first year, he was dealing with COVID, and so he was sick and didn't really get to play that much. So he goes from being sick to playing off the ball. Then he comes back, and his next year, he's his best defender. Well, come now, he says, I actually put him on the ball. He says, he has done everything for me. He is an example of what UNC Wilmington basketball is all about. Speaking of the Seahawks head coach, Takeo Siddle, what did he do so well coming into this game, game plan wise? Well, I think he did a phenomenal job of making sure that his team wasn't afraid. A lot of times you come in here a little apprehensive, but you see Reeves with the three pointer. This team hasn't showed any fear. But they're going to be tested here early now. Loose ball. Mitchell. Shepard slows it down. Long three. Drew contact from McGriff. And Reed Shepard will go to the line for three. Yeah, Kamari McGriff is an unfortunate foul. 6'9", 210-pound red shirt sophomore out of Tallahassee, Florida. And obviously, when you got a guy that came into this game and Reed Shepard shooting 63% from the three-pointer, you don't want to allow him to get a wide-open look, but you can't foul the jump shoot. His first trip to the line today. You know, we were actually talking to Sean Woods, and he talked about he and, and Stacy Shepard actually having battles right <laughs> and, and you see that actually saying that he's more like his mom uh than he was his dad jeff shepherd on that national championship team but i thought that was interesting all of your top women players they seem to have some time along their career went up against guys and sean wood the former great point guard here he said she was rough she was tough they really went back and forth there she is there she is yeah uh-oh. Pops it, it, is coming out of yeah, the sweatshirt. The pullover is going off. <laughs> it's down to a one-point game. Closest that Kentucky's been since the first two and a half minutes of the game when it was 5-4. Into the front court, three. Jenkins off the heel. Cats looking to take their first lead. Lob! <laughs> Couldn't finish Edwards. It would have brought the house down. Jenkins... Fade away, falls. You know, they come up empty to the Cats, but I love the fact that they're working on speeding up their opponents. Give credit, though, the Seahawks, again, showing a lot of poise and patience on the offensive end. They want to get up and down, too. Reeves. Back to a one-point game. Antonio in double figures with a dozen to lead Kentucky in scoring. Jenkins, tough 17-footer. And once again, Kentucky with an opportunity to grab a lead for the first time today. Shepard. Reed Shepard does a point a 13 now for him. Baker's dozen with his two made threes. He's 24 minutes making his first collegiate start today. And now trying to pick the pocket of Rattan Mays. 
Yeah, let's see what the Seahawks come with out of this timeout. Not surprised that they're trying to get it to White. Hodge. Three from the corner by Ooh. the big man. Eric Vanderheiden. Where did that come from? Yeah, what an answer. Well, the 6'9", 225-pound junior out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Huge shot. First made three of the half for UNCW, but their ninth of the game. And the Ted Hayes has picked up his second foul. Timeout at Rupp in a one-point game. I think part of his team taking his personality is his poise. He doesn't seem to get rattled. He didn't seem to get rattled as a player, and he doesn't seem to get rattled as a coach either. You know, any other run-of-the-mill fan base, if I said some random outcome from 16 years ago, most would not know it. But I know there are Kentucky fans out there right now saying, oh, yeah, I remember that game in 07 <laughs> when Gardner-Webb came here and beat him. Trey Mitchell's going to shoot two. We talked about how Trey Mitchell could settle them down. No, There's actually a fan. There's plenty of fans here, here. <laughs> as you can see. But th they Mitchell said the they were concerned about when Aaron Bradshaw came back, would it disrupt the chemistry of this basketball team? Look, Coach Cal's a Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it. And, of course, he's going to work him in correct. But what they said is that Trey Mitchell was like a big brother. He was like a father figure with those other guys. And you can see that even in this basketball game today. And Coach Cal told us before the game that whenever he would have Bradshaw on the floor, it would be in combination with Trey Mitchell. Right. And a big reason why, what you just mentioned. Well, Kentucky after the free throws from Trey. Take that one point lead. Lowest point total for Kentucky this year is 81. Came in averaging 94 per game. That's an off-balance shot off the mark there from Prezarian White. Reeves trying to find a crease and does. Reeves. An initial lane to the bucket got sealed off, but he adjusted and makes a nice play. To put him up by three. That was a prime example of offensive pressure. From the missed shot of White to that pass up ahead, what a block by the arrow. Reeves going to push it again. He allows the arrow to get back in the play. Hit the deck after making the play defensively. A Shepard shot from the free throw line. It's going to rebound off the floor for White. Three, Hodge. A miss. The three not falling with the same frequency in the second half for UNCW that it did in the first half. A little out of control. Dillingham, it was saved along the baseline by Hodge. And then Reeves commits a blocking foul. And Phillips trying to get up the floor. Number you know, two. Mark, the Seahawks do a nice job of getting up and down the floor, but watch off of the miss by White. Boom, the pass up ahead. You can see Reeves running the floor. That's what we mean when we talk about offensive pressure. If you jog back against the Wildcats, you will get blown out. I think that the Seahawks have done a nice job of sprinting back and at least contesting in almost every offensive transition that the Kentucky Wildcats have had. See that Reeves, nine points in the second half, so he has 14 to lead all scores in his 21 minutes and is 5 of 7 from the field. Vanderheide's already hit one three today. The second one is going to bounce off the top of the backboard a couple of times. Stay in play for Kentucky. Quick pass back out for Dillingham. Jordan Burks in the game. He's underneath the bucket. Is that shot? On the mark from Reed Shepard. Young fella's got a nice mindset to him. He carries himself like a pro already. Now Kentucky on a 7-0 run over the last two minutes. They go up by six. A Jenkins three. And again, the three is not there right now. But White able to get the rebound and have a chance for a three-point play. What an incredible answer 
by Cesarian White out of Mansfield, Texas. Nice job. And one of the challenges that Kentucky has often is the defensive glass. And, and that's what Coach Cal talked to us about today. And he said UNC Wilmington has been a fantastic job of attacking the offensive glass. They're doing that again today. Foul was on Antonio Reeves. It is his third. He is the first player on either side to three fouls. So White able to get it down to a three-point game, but Shepard answers, left it a little short. Hart and Hayes picked from behind by Reed Shepard. Outstanding hustle by Reed Shepard. And that's what you want to do if you're a young player. Don't put your head down if you don't make the perfect play. Get back on defense and try to make up for it. Ball sticking a little bit today, though. It's not moving and popping as quick. That's better. To the miss by Edwards. UNCW led throughout most of this game until about four and a half minutes into the second half before the Wildcats took their first lead. Love the pressure by Dillingham. Always trying to push the tempo. Five to shoot. Newby, it swung around to Harden Hayes. A three. Underneath White again. This time doesn't get the shot to fall, but will shoot two free throws. 11.20 to play in the second half at Rupp. We hope to hear from you on social media. Actually got Jack Goose Givens right beside yeah. us to our right. Not only one of the greatest players in school history, great broadcaster now on Kentucky Radio. They just flat out one of the nicest human beings on the planet. Yep, that you ever meet. White's free throws. Calmly makes this a one-point game with 11.20 to go. Thoroughly impressed by the Seahawks right now. And this is the end where they've gotten it done. You know, we talked about this Kentucky team averaging close to 95 points a game. 11 minutes left to go, and they're stuck at this 55 number. Mitchell. A poke there from Phillips creates a steal. Grabbed by Newby. Yeah, he was able to push Trey Mitchell off of the block enough. Trey Mitchell that time should have went to an inside pivot. He should have faced up against Phillips. Various White going to the line again. And right now, Rosarian White is keeping UNC not only within striking distance, but now back in front. Well, if you thought that UNC Wilmington was going away quietly, Cesarian Wright has another answer. Cesarian White, excuse me, has another answer for you. We told you that he really looked at as their best player, if you will. First team all CAA. You look at his ability to knock down jump shots from the perimeter. Supreme athlete. He could certainly play at, let's say, an SEC, ACC, or power conference level with his size and athleticism. UNCW on a 7 0 run over the last not quite two minutes. By the way, that last foul was on Trey Mitchell, his third. Reeves has already left the game with four. Another opportunity for Adu, I should say for Edwards, and a foul on UNCW. Well, that's something that I think that Kentucky can certainly do, even though we talked about how many points they're averaging. And because they've been shooting the basketball so well, they came into this game actually shooting close to 43%, which was fifth in the nation from behind the three-point line today. Still not bad, 5 of 13. But I think they can rebound the basketball. They have athletes. They just have to get accustomed to going to the offensive glass and securing it. Switch on the first one from Justin Edwards. Vanderheide picked up his third foul for the Seahawks, so he's on the bench, and Kamari McGriff has checked in. I think our viewers should be reminded. We talked about how many points Kentucky's averaging. This Seahawks team's averaging, you know, well over 80 points a game as well. They're averaging 83 coming in. Kentucky averaging 94 coming in with their season low being 81 against Texas A&M Commerce. 
midway through this second half. White again blocked from behind by Mitchell, last touched by Trey. But right now, Trezarian White taking over for UNCW. Yeah, well, he's a good matchup for Kentucky, right? You look at this team, they're a veteran team, so they've you know, been through some adversity, and they're confident. Woo! Donovan Newby. Two threes in the first half, hits his first of the second half there to give the Seahawks a three-point lead. Dillingham off balance. That's too quick. He didn't give the defense a chance to break down at all. Phillips found White. Shaquem Phillips uses the screen. Getting to the basket again. White foul, and he's making a living in the lane and at the line. Well, the difference between offenses right now is that UNC Wilmings is just being a little bit more patient, and they're screening. Reed Shepard that time had to go through what, what they call kind of an elevator screen where they, the door opens up and then it closes for the defense. Nice job of contesting, but they're making Kentucky work harder to score offensively than Kentucky is making them to work hard on the other end. Well, White had been perfect from the line, but this one is last trip. This is the front end, the uh, first one here. And splits the pair. White now is 17 points, so he passes Shepard 16 for Kentucky now. Game high at the moment. Shepard. Phillips able to get that rebound. Yeah, they tried to run that high ball screen that they like to run at the top with Trey Mitchell. He slipped the screen, and Reed took the good shot. Just came up a little short. White again. Stumbling down, was able to somehow find Newby in it. Dillingham. That's his second. I'll start to pile up here for Kentucky. Well, Rob Dillingham trying to get pressure that time. And I think this is the second time that Donovan Newby has gotten a couple of calls. You see it at the NBA level quite a bit. When you're able to use your body language offensively to get calls, oftentimes that will make the defense much more passive. 17th foul already here in the second half for Kentucky, so it's going to put Newby at the line for one and one. Whew. For the last eight minutes and 51 seconds, yeah. you've got the Seahawks in the bonus. So that's going to soften up the defense. You see there on the bug, just 14 fouls against UNC Wilmington. And Newby calmly hits the front end, his first free throw attempt of the game. So for Kentucky, you got Reeves on the bench with four fouls. Adu has three. Trey Mitchell, three. Vander Hutton, the only UNCW player with three fouls. Well, Reeves is the second lead to score in this basketball game for Kentucky. Sitting there beside Tyler Ewis, another guy who could have been on that list potentially. And right now, I like Kentucky just being a little bit more patient on the offensive end. They don't have to get it in the first five seconds all the time if it's not there. Take their time, set a few screens, move the basketball, and take what the defense gives you. UNCW on a 13-2 run. In and out. Yeah, just a much better look. But now, as the game goes on, you start to get game pressure on these young Kentucky Wildcats. See how the basketball's moving, it's flowing, it's popping from side to side from the Seahawks right now. Jenkins got in a huge crowd. Somehow it finds its way to McGriff. Too hard off the backboard. Long outlet. Dillingham. Rattan Mays back. Offensive foul is the call. And that'll be number three on Rob Dillingham. Wow. 
What do you think? Well, if you get an offensive foul now, it's supposed to be before the offensive player gathers. And I think if Dillingham had a taken off off of the first step, it would have been a block. But because he used the Euro step to go to the next one, I think it was a correct call. Well, Dillingham helps create a turnover there, a little over and back on the dribble by Rattan Mays. Under eight minutes. After coming off of the Miami game, Kentucky thought that this game may be a little bit easier and have tried to get it rather quickly. Their assisted turnover ratio came coming into this basketball game was 2.56 uh, assisted turnover ratio. They were the best in the country. Today they've got 11 assists to 12 turnovers. They're trying to get it too fast. They've got to move this basketball a lot more. And you have to remember there's an absence of D.J. Wagner from this basketball game who is a constant threat to shrink the defense. They don't have that here tonight, and I think they're missing that a little bit. The first game without Wagner with a left ankle injury. It could be a few weeks before D.J. comes back. We'll see, but nonetheless, a little different dynamic without him available sure but it's good practice for him what if he gets in two fouls in a game or has to set out well, bradshaw got held perhaps there by white and yeah, that was the case two things kentucky has experienced for the first time this year they trailed at the half for the first time in this game and they were also down by as many as 14 points to uncw in the first half that's been their biggest deficit of the season well i feel like they keep expecting UNC Wilmington to give up. And to a certain extent, Miami, who recovered today against Notre Dame, did give up a little bit in that game. Uh, the, the Seahawks are not giving up in this basketball game. Edwards with a bucket to break the field goal drought for the Cats. Trying to ISO White here. With Edwards, defensive help from Shepard, a kick out, almost thrown away. One to shoot, and that did not hit the rim as Phillips forced to put it up with the clock shot winding down. Nice help that time by Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard is a coach on the floor. And, you know, Coach Cal didn't have to tell him to double team. You see that a lot at the NBA level. Guys that are extremely sharp. Sometimes they just go and double team. They know they're comfortable enough to know that they can get back to their man. And that was a nice job of Reed Shepard doubling, getting the basketball out of Trezarian White's hands. Bradshaw and Mitchell on the floor together again. Trey looks for the high low pass to Bradshaw. Instead to the baseline. Edwards partially blocked. Loose ball taken by KJ Jenkins of the Seahawks. And then a little contact from Dillingham in the backcourt. And that's going to be his fourth. Well, right now, the officials are calling it a lot closer. And yeah, Dillingham got him on the right arm that time. Shaquem Phillips did a nice job of holding on to the basketball. And I don't mind Dillingham being aggressive. He's just got to learn, right? Seventh youngest team again in college basketball are these Kentucky Wildcats. And they're learning that every single time you walk in between the lines, you got to be prepared for a fight. Another one and one. And Front end missed that time by Phillips. And by the way, Dillingham's gone out with four fouls. And Reeves, with four fouls, is back on the floor. It's a Shepard drive. Able to reverse it after the rebound and score. Yeah, that's, we usually see more ball screens in the middle third of the floor. I like that with Reed Shepard having the game, basketball in his hand. Here comes the rough crowd in the two-point game. White had it punched out. Last touch by Justin Edwards. On the opposite side, you are seeing the Seahawks run the ball screens. They're doing it, and they're being pretty successful because a lot of times there either is a help or wide open man that gets to the rim. I'm looking for Trezarian White, though, to get the basketball here, and they're going to try to probably isolate him as well. Here it goes. White trying to get past Edwards. Yep. Strong drive. Trezarian White who has wanted the basketball here in the second half for UNCW and has been productive. Yeah, similar size, similar athleticism as Justin Edwards. Reeves had to kiss it in, wanted done. Here is White. 
Gonna run it up the floor this time. Slow it down. Five and a half minutes to go. Does UNCW have what it takes to finish this off? White tried to reverse a miss. Yeah, good no call that time. Chucky's got numbers. Shepard. Twenty for Shepard, thirteen in the second half. Timeout, Seahawks. We talked about when you played Kentucky. We also watch seasons one through five on ESPN Plus. I look for Trezarian White to get the basketball again. As you see Reeves inserted back in this basketball game with four fouls, though. There he is. They like that isolation. It's him and Edwards. The Wildcats need to show a lot of help. White. Edwards. Thought he got all ball. The officials disagree. Well, it's obvious what Coach Siddle is doing. And that's a foul. He came across, he got him on the arm. Got him on the arm and a little bit of body as well. But I think the fans are upset because of some other calls that have been made tonight, so they're a little agitated. It was a shooting foul, so it's two shots nonetheless, but it was the 10th team foul, so it's two free throws the rest of the way for the Seahawks here. Missed them both. Here it goes again. Ball screen with Trey Mitchell. Let's see if he pops. Nice action. Reeves. Just a little bit long. Like that look a, a lot better than what we've seen, right? Uh, it was a wide open look for one of the better shooters. Phillips. Now White with five on the shot clock. He's going to shoot a three. My ooh, goodness. Ooh, ooh. Wow. Fella. Trezarian White out of Mansfield, Texas in his bag. Five-point lead as we're under the four-minute mark. White trying to defend Trey Mitchell. Mitchell spins, scores, and an one opportunity. And Mitchell's going to be at the line when we come back. Don't go anywhere. It's a three-point game late. About his team here down the stretch. One-one. Can't finish off a three-point play. And it remains a three-point game. Yeah, a lot of game pressure right now for the Kentucky Wildcats. You assume White's going to get a touch at some point. Well, they've just been isolating him. I like the fact that Reed Shepard went double-teamed him the last time. Here's that matchup again. Edwards, Rosarian White. Kind of hesitated, flips it up, and scores Ooh. again. Big time shot on the road by Trezarian White. Reeves looking to answer. Knocked out of his hands. Went into the arms of White, and then he is fouled. So that's going to take the Seahawks to the other end to shoot two with 2.56 left. Wow. Trezarian White. And you're a little nervous about doing that because, you know, you're looking at the Seahawks who've already knocked down 11 three-point baskets. I may send a double team. I'm going to do something to try to make him a little bit more uncomfortable. White started out hot from the line. He's gone a bit cold since then. Hit his first four from the stripe, but now he's five of nine. It's one of two. Good miss, though. 
makes it a two-possession game. Let's see where Kentucky goes right now. Plenty of time. Shepard Edwards, well executed there. Yeah, beautiful job. You, you saw Trey Mitchell come up, slip the screen, which left an open back cut that time by Justin Edwards. Got to almost dribbled that in the front court and in the back court. Yeah, but I like that. He's shaking it up defensively, not allowing the Seahawks to be comfortable. Now they've got to go to work with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. White, who has scored 16 of the last 21 for the Seahawks, has not touched it yet on this possession. And now Phillips with the shot clock winding down. Stumau got it Basket over Edwards. Edwards, who may have touched that anyway. Nonetheless, the bucket takes it back to six. Shepard, tough shot, and one! In the words of Mark Jackson, mama, there goes that man. <laughs> Shepard does such a nice job at playing at his own pace. He takes what the defense gives him. He actually ran into Trey Mitchell a little bit. Just great focus, keeps his eyes on the rim. Outstanding body language and a huge basket. And now has a chance to pull Kentucky within three. He does just that with two minutes to play in regulation. Shepard going for the steal after he got Phillips to cross midcourt. I like the aggressiveness by Kentucky right now. Phillips for to shoot, spinning, turning, scoring. Woo. Impressive. A veteran basketball team here. Shepard, quick shot on a three. Mitchell going after it. He's fouled as he's tumbling to the court. I believe they're going to get Phillips on that. Well, Phillips, we talked about the job that Reed Shepard did. Phillips right back at you. Just takes his time. Nice spin. Feathery touch over the top of the rim. And Kentucky in this second half, really for the entire game outside for a couple of minutes, just not quite over, able to get over the hump. We've got huge free throws here by Trey Mitchell. Six to seven from the line today. And he missed the front end. After the 19 foul against UNCW. Still don't have to foul now if you're Kentucky, but you do have to get consecutive stops here going down the stretch. UNC Wilmington, you want to be poised, patient, done well all, all game long, and you have to watch the, the offensive glass if you're the Wildcats. Phillips leaning in again. Got his own miss. A fresh clock and a timeout called by UNCW. Now, there have been a few possessions here, Fish. White's been open. That is a full timeout. But Phillips has taken it to the rim. It paid off. He's still going to put some pressure for the Seahawks to have to score at the charity strike. The UNCW Seahawks representing what used to be called the Colonial Athletic Association. As of this year, they're now the Coastal Athletic Association. Seahawks trying to pull off a stunner at Rupp Arena with under a minute to go in regulation. There goes the double team. Phillips in trouble. Adu going for the steal. It's a tie-up possession arrow. Wilmington, which is huge here. But there's six on the shot clock. They keep possession, but still don't have a lot of time to work with. No, they don't, but that's okay if you're Kentucky. Uh, but if I'm Kentucky, it's six seconds. I'm going to play straight up and try to make sure I secure the rebound and then split down the score as quickly as possible. In the backcourt, Phillips. Shot clock at four. Phillips, a drive, a shot. Good. Woo! It is a three-possession game. 
with just over a half minute to go. Dillingham trying to get to the rim quickly. Loose underneath. Batted around Edwards and eventually a foul against the Seahawks. What a finish over the outstretched arms of Trey Mitchell. And again, Kentucky's without their seven-footers. We saw Aaron Bradshaw come in a little bit today, but that's some of that rim protection that Coach Kyle's going to be looking for once they become a complete team. But, man, Shaquem Phillips at 6'2", 190 pounds, able to have the speed and touch to get over the outstretched arms of Trey Mitchell. And for much of this second half, Fish, it was Trezarian White who was keeping them not only in the game but in the lead for a lot of this game. But the last three, four minutes here, it's been Phillips. And that's going to make it a five-point game. 27 and a half seconds left. That's Jordan Burks who has come in. Well, he's got a foul. Yeah, well. Yeah. And that's why you took Dillingham out of the game. Coach Cal just trying to exchange defense for offense. Loose. Shepard steals it. Deflected. Staying with Kentucky. But the UNCW players are saying they want to go to the monitor, have the officials go to the monitor to see who touched this last. <laughs> what a steal. And so Kentucky in the exact same situation. Seahawks. Have to do a better job of taking care of the basketball on this particular play. Newbie, wow. but the arrow almost able to get to that in time. Look at the hustle, man. And, and the difference will be this will be a spot throw in, of course. And so Trezarian White cannot move. Into Phillips in the corner. They look to trap and they at least do get a foul to stop the clock with 20 seconds left. Two shots coming for the Seahawks. The foul is on Edwards. That's his third. Phillips, an 80% free throw shooter on the year. Career 78% free throw shooter. Calmly sinks the first. Make it a six point game. Huge free throw here. Try to make this a three possession game with 20 seconds left. Repossession game. Kentucky's got to go quickly. Shepard. Edwards. Short. Tipped. Bodies falling out of bounds to UNCW. And it's looking like the Seahawks are going to pull off a stunning win here at Rupp Arena. You have to give all the credit in the world to Takeo Siddle. He had his team prepared after a tough loss uh, going against East Carolina, a game in which they shot three of 23 from behind the three-point line. But they come out today, and they almost knocked down four times as much, 11 three-pointers. That's the difference in the basketball game today. And a hard lesson for this young Wildcat team to learn here at home. They let Shepard flush it. Shepherd. But how about this for the Seahawks as Kentucky takes a timeout? Kentucky was also shooting close to 43% from behind the three-point line. They held them to 5 of 17 to 29%. How about this? I know there's a lot of college football going on that's dominating the sports world, but this final right here is going to catch a lot of folks by surprise as UNC Wilmington 